In this week's lecture, we will cover Chapter 4 of Tim Harewer's Inside Reporting, Reporting Basics. It's another action-packed lecture, so we'll break it up into multiple videos, starting with where story ideas come from, finding and using sources, and using the internet for research. We'll then talk about journalistic observation and taking notes, and then go over interviewing. We'll finish up our lecture on reporting basics with quotations and attributions. With countless newspapers, magazines, radio and television programs, and websites all covering stories, you're bound to wonder where they come up with all those story ideas. The easy answer is that stuff happens constantly, and it only takes a sharp eye to find it. Breaking news is an unexpected news event. Someone is arrested for assault. A prominent local resident dies in a car accident, a flood, or maybe a fellow student wins the Powerball jackpot. Stories can also come from scheduled events. These can be speakers on campus, legislative sessions, the state fair, Halloween, Valentine's Day, anything you know in advance that's going to happen. Even the first baby of the new year is a scheduled event, although you might not know exactly when it is happening. News releases, also called press releases, are another great place to get story ideas. A news release is information that companies, government agencies, nonprofit organizations, etc., send to newspapers to try to get an announcement printed. Now, in this example from the NC State Technician, the OIT plan security increase story came from a press release. You can tell because the lead begins, the Office of Information Technology releases plans describing its goals for the year. The other article, Criminal Producers Visit D.H. Hill, that story came from a scheduled event, learned about through a calendar listing on the NC State Library website. Finally, your ideas help form both news and feature pieces. Maybe you notice everyone in your class is suddenly wearing long, dangly earrings, and you wonder why. Or maybe you've always wanted to know, to know more about what it's like to live in a foreign country. Breaking news is, by definition, unscheduled. So a journalist needs to always be ready to drop everything to get the scoop. The bigger the story, the more you will need to be on scene to help tell that story. Move fast, as time is of the essence, as breaking news is unfolding. You want to be on the scene when there's still something to see and people to interview. Now, this one won't be a problem for modern reporters. Always carry a cell phone, so you can report back to the newsroom with updates. Finally, if possible, always carry a camera. Now, words can do wonders to capture a reader's attention. But look at this heart-wrenching photo of a young woman being comforted by her father after a fire destroyed her apartment. Now, I don't remember many details of the news story published in the NC State Technician, but years later, I still remember this photo, which later won first place in newspaper photography from the North Carolina College Media Association. The next news idea category is scheduled events. Stories about scheduled events can be advances or previews of the event, telling your readers what will happen so they know if they'd like to attend. Now, the best way to keep track of scheduled events is for your newsroom to keep a long-range calendar. This can be a physical calendar or a Google calendar that aggregates calendars from your campus, city, and other organizations. Now, when writing a story about a scheduled event, Take the time to learn the history of the event. If you're writing a preview of the producers of the criminal podcast coming to campus that we saw a few slides earlier, write about how the podcast got started, how many people listened to it, and how the talk fits in with the lecture series. Now for big events like an election or the state fair, team up with photographers and other reporters to help cover multiple angles. As part of my job at NC State Student Media, I get a lot of news releases each week and send out some of my own occasionally. 
Now, some news releases really are newsworthy and would make excellent stories. These are the ones I forward on to my students for consideration. What you should never do is print a press release exactly as written. A news release is not a news story. It's written to make the company or organization look good while touting their new product, service, award, or event. You'll want to cut out the fluffy marketing and get to the real news. You can usually trust facts that are printed in a news release for news briefs or calendar pieces, but Harrower recommends always double checking the facts and editing them for balance, context, and fairness when turning a press release into a longer news piece, like the piece on the OIT security that was printed in Technician. Finally, if you can't get in touch with someone to replace the quote printed in the news release, always say, according to a release or in a prepared statement. It's okay if you don't get to talk to anyone yourself about the story, but make sure that the readers know that. Reporters are only as good as their sources. Be sure to select sources that are relevant to the story. You don't wanna interview someone about a major local news event if the person is visiting from another state has no idea what's going on. Always check your sources for accuracy. The person you interview might be mistaken about something or the person could be straight up lying to you. Either way, you should never take everything at face value. Double, or in some cases, triple check what your source says, just like everything else in your story. Balance your stories for fairness. If you're doing a story on a new dog park, for example, talk with people happy about the park and those upset with it. You want to represent both sides of the issue. Remember that how you feel about the new dog park and its location is irrelevant. Finally, always ask your sources what else might be going on of interest to get tips on other stories. The more sources you use, the better your reporting will be. Sources help provide depth for your story. More sources equal more information and insight to share with your readers. Sources also provide context. Readers broaden their understanding when you approach the topic from different points of view. Your first source might think the new dog park is great, but what about the people living next to the dog park? and what do they have to say about it? Finally, sources provide reliability for your story. Remember that sometimes your source can provide you with bad information. Well, having multiple sources decreases your risk of the information presented being inaccurate or biased. So who are these magical sources and where do you find them? Just with story ideas, you find sources everywhere. Newsmakers are those who take part, willingly or not, in news events. The survivor of a car accident, the softball player who scores the winning run, the teacher who wins an award. The story is about them, so they should be featured prominently in it. Now, spokespeople, are those designated to speak for a company or organization. Some companies discourage their employees from speaking to the press. So an official spokesperson might be the only one willing to talk to you. Experts are people who know a great deal about a specific topic. Many schools, Durham Tech included, maintain a list of experts on various topics. Your Sakai lesson page for this week lists some local and national experts and their lists that you might find helpful. Official records contain a wealth of information. These include police reports, 911 call logs, lawsuits, proposed legislation, property and tax records. Reference material refers to encyclopedias, dictionaries, almanacs or phone books. Most of this information is now available on the internet. And finally, ordinary folks, or the person on the street interview, 
provides information about what the average person might feel about a proposed tuition increase or new bus routes. Quotes from ordinary folks add authenticity that resonates with the readers. Once you have the information from your sources, you need to know how to present it in your story. Attribution means citing your sources, attributing the information you receive from them. It shows the reader that you're reporting rather than just coming up with it on your own. Now, sometimes you might deal with anonymous sources, people who will only speak to you if you promise not to print their name in the newspaper. While highly discouraged, an anonymous source may be the only way to get information into a story. Using anonymous sources can undermine your credibility, which is why they should only be used in extreme cases. At some newspapers, only the editor can approve using an anonymous source. Now, if you promise to source anonymity and your editor disagrees, you cannot print the information. Many years ago, one of my students was interviewed by the campus newspaper in a story about roommate disputes. The reporter promised not to print her name, but the editor disagreed. And my student ended up being quoted in the newspaper complaining about a roommate she was still living with. When the reporter learned that the source couldn't be anonymous, my student's quotes should have been left out of the story. Now, a final thing you need to keep in mind is to question every source's reliability. Be wary of everyone. There's an old journalism saying, if your mother says she loves you, check it out. Never take anything at face value. Whether the source is mistaken or out and out lying to you, it's up to you to determine the real facts behind the source quotations.